3.30 yesterday afternoon, KMOV put a statement on their webpage saying that they are so worried about journalistic integrity that they had to let Larry Connors go. Joe Holloman then uh, talked to him and uh, wrote the news story. And uh, Larry Connors is now out of a job after 37 years in the business. Um, we're going to talk about that at 910 here on the Big 550 KTRS. You can watch the show at KTRS.com slash McGraw. You can listen to it at uh, 550 AM on your AM dial. And uh, we're pretty proud of our joint venture with the Post-Dispatch, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. We can uh, tell the story with pictures and video uh, from their uh, archives. They are the biggest news-gathering organization in town, hands down, not even close. Matter of fact, if you added up all of the news gathering operations of all of the journalistic integrity newsrooms around town, you would find that the St. Louis Post Dispatch newsroom is by far and away the largest news gathering operation in St. Louis. Good morning, Scott Sherman. Good morning, McGraw. And let and me you're right. Let me let me let me let me uh let me let you behind the curtain here a little bit. And and let me uh <laughs> Let me tell you how this Larry Connors story comes down. If it wasn't for Joe Holloman following this story, nobody would have known what's going on. Joe Holloman of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Everybody read Joe Holloman's article, and then all of a sudden, exclusive, Larry Connors is no longer here, right? They all read it from the Post. Happens every day. You want to know where people get their news? You want to know where news organizations get their news from in St. Louis? stltoday.com. So... You can listen to somebody rewrite the news, or you can listen to us talk to the people who actually wrote the news story, who do the digging, who sit in the town hall meetings, who dig through court records, who dig through city hall to find the answers and to find the interesting stories. So we are thrilled with our partnership with them, and um, we have access to their resources here so we can help uh, tell the story. And so hats off to Joe Hallman, who has been following this story from the beginning. Now, what's interesting about this is that this this announcement they put on their webpage at 3.30 yesterday afternoon, Scott Sherman. Yes, sir. Our legal beagle. Uh, says that um, they were worried. Um, here's what they wrote. Um, that Larry Connors put them in it. Well, it's here. I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, the current IRS controversy is of serious importance for journalists to report. Not really, because you're just reading AP copy. No one's digging through the IRS archives. You're reading an AP copy. Not in Channel Four. They're not right. I mean, I mean, let's 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 call it the way it is. Okay, you're reading an AP copy. Somebody at AP is doing the hard work, and you belong to AP, and you can write or read what they wrote. Then CBS might send you some video. And then you pair the video with the AP copy and you have Larry Connors read it. So there's no real journalistic integrity question over this, okay? So they go, I'm sorry. They go on to say, the current IRS controversy is of serious importance to journalists to report. And it becomes very difficult for us to produce a newscast where you have someone reporting IRS-related news who could at least seem to be biased. <laughs> like people are on the fence about the IRS. Well, First I mean, of all, how did anybody at KMOV yeah. actually write this with a straight face? <laughs> they, they go on to say, Larry is certainly entitled to his opinion, but taking personal po political position on one of the sta uh, station's Facebook pages creates an appearance of bias that is inconsistent with important journalistic standards. Now, let me ask you this, this question, Scott Sherman. Yes, sir. I I'm fired up. I'm Go. fired up. So the how many times do you think between now and the next, say, five years, Larry Connors would have to read IRS and an AP story about the IRS and um, run some quote unquote B roll from some video service? Uh, about the IRS. I don't know. Half a dozen times, maybe? A couple uh, times? That's right? as good a guess as any. Right. 
Well, now that he's no longer gone because they're worried about their journalistic standards. Mm -hmm. How many times do you think Steve Savard, mm -hmm. who is paid by the St. Louis Rams to be their play-by-play -play man, will have to report on a story about the Rams wanting to get a new stadium and use public dollars for that? More times than the IRS story. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if they're so worried about journalistic standards, why are they allowing now the lead anchor of Channel 4, which I have no problem with Steve Savard, but wh why are they allowing him to be paid for or part of getting paid by the St. Louis Rams, who are clearly a news story in the next five years? This happens all the time. Well, I mean, wh where's the journalistic standards there? There's no journalistic integrity in their claim of journalistic integrity. They fired Larry Connors because, A, it's a controversy that they don't want to get anywhere near, and, B, it's a good opportunity, apparently, to get rid of a guy that probably makes a lot more money than some of the other people that they have on their staff. They, Channel 4... I mean, haven't they been moving towards younger and more and less experienced people on air? They have been moving toward. Well, I, I mean, let me ask you this, this question. This is a station that's so worried about journalistic integrity that they run a promotional piece claiming that their morning show is best because <laughs> they have Captain Roger Brand with them. Now, I love Captain Roger Brand. I worked with Captain Ro Roger Brand for years. Captain Roger Brand sits in the same helicopter as Tim Weiland. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> plane, but yeah. <laughs> okay, whatever. Yeah, the plane. I mean, not, it doesn't, they don't, they sit literally right next to each other. <laughs> they trade information back and forth. There is nothing, there is no difference between Roger Brand and Tim Weiland. You might like the way one guy sounds over another, so you might want to listen to one over the other. That's fine. But I think Tim Weiland's the best. And there's no disrespect. No, no argument here. No disrespect to Roger Brand. Tim Weiland is is unbelievable when it comes to this stuff. Not only is he the most knowledgeable, but he his delivery's great. He's tremendous. And so we, as much as I love Tim Weiland, I can't say we have exclusive traffic here because everybody's got the same traffic. And so journalistic integrity... I whatever little integrity I have, I want to hold on to. And so I can't in good conscience say we have the best traffic in town because we've all got the same traffic. We all we all look at the same cameras. We all look at the and we're all sitting in the same plane. And what's unusual about it is what Larry Connors put on his Facebook page doesn't preclude him from either reading what's already been written on on the teleprompter for him to read or by covering the story, or by the station covering the story. So if they say to Larry Connors, you can't go to Washington to investigate this IRS tax thing, right. or go to Cincinnati, or you can't have interviews with Tea Party people locally, that would take out of the equation any sort of bias, because the only guy that has an ax to grind with the IRS on this issue is is the guy who primarily reads what's already written by producers of the show. <laughs> it's like saying that you it's it, it's like being mad at at I I don't know um Jerry Seinfeld for having a pr particular political position but yet the show would be written by Larry David. You know, he's right. reading right, right, a right. script. Right. That doesn't make him not a journalist, right. but unless he's out in the field doing the story it's not his story. Right, right, right. right. Uh, I'm sorry. Was Channel 4 sending a team of investigators up to Cincinnati to dig through these IRS records? Right. They didn't send Chris Nagus out there <laughs> right. I with mean, the microphone to chase them around. Journalistic integrity. You want to talk about journalistic integrity. Let's talk about journalistic integrity. And, and present company included, and this sort of... I'm going to give myself a huge, or this show, a huge, I'm going to break my arm patting this show on the back. But the reason why I'm so excited over this joint venture with the St. Louis Post-Dispatch and stltoday.com is because there is really only one news organization 
doing the heavy lifting in this region, by far and away, it's our local hometown newspaper. You might disagree with their editorial page. You might disagree. You might not like Deb Peterson's hair. You might not like something Bernie Miklas says. You might not like the way Dan O'Neill writes a story. But collectively, they gather the news and present it in a way. And the rest of us steal it from them. That's a fact. It just is. And if they're not stealing from them, they're stealing from the AP wire because they pay to get the blurbs to fill in the newscast. Right, exactly. But if you could actually sit down with every journalist that's working, either whether it's in, in television or in newspapers, and quiz them about their particular positions on issues, they're not all right down the middle. That has their particular polit- political or personal position on something has nothing to do with journalistic integrity and being fair. What Larry Connors said in his private life on Facebook is no different than what a lot of people say on Facebook in their private life away from their job. Well, and sometimes they get fired for saying that thing. But for Larry, for someone at, at Channel Four to say. The station can't have journalistic integrity because one of their reporters has a particular position, then they should fire all of them because they all have a particular well, position. Well, their argument is that he expressed his opinion. Um, really? Okay. So what? Uh, look, I, I look. <laughs> I, I mean, Channel 4 should, should hang their head in shame over this. Just hang their head in shame. When we come back, yeah, Larry Connors claim, and according to Joe Holloman, uh, saying that that he he was not allowed to explain what he meant by his comments, and that is he had a payment plan set up, and he was paying it off. And after the interview with with President Obama, they changed the parameters of that payment plan. What was the question that Larry Connors is asking? Because he's only asking a question, which is what journalists do, right? Right. He's asking, hey, after this interview I did, it just so happens that they changed my payoff plan. Hmm. I wonder, well, we're going to have the interview that Larry Connors conducted with President Obama, and you can hear the question for yourself and hear his answer next on the Big 550 KTRS. Salute American Vodka, new sponsor of the show, and to help kick things off, they're having a contest. Salute American Vodka was started by a company that wanted to raise money for veterans' charity. So every dollar or every bottle that is sold of American uh, Salute American Vodka, for every dollar sold, they'll give that $1 to uh, veterans' charities. Let me say that again. For every bottle sold of Salute American Vodka, I'm fired up over Larry Connors. Uh, Salute American Vodka. For every bottle that's sold, Salute American Vodka will give $1 to veterans' charities. Now, here's the contest. They want to know who you salute. Go to Facebook.com, Salute American Vodka and fill out and explain who you salute. If you, They'll give away weekly prizes and a grand prize of four tickets to a Blake Shelton concert and ground transportation. That's a pretty good deal. Salute American Vodka. Great vodka. Winning awards all over the country. Salute American Vodka. For every bottle sold, $1 goes to charities. And enter for a chance to win Blake Shelton concert tickets. Facebook.com slash Salute American Vodka. Severe weather can happen at any time at any time even if your power goes out you can still tap the app the ktrs app on your phone for the latest real-time updates on the latest weather conditions and warnings we keep the information streaming live at ktrs.com the big 550 ktrs depend Depend on it there's nothing subliminal about getting hungry hungry it usually hits you with the subtlety of a ton of bricks. Hungry, hungry. Now that your stomach has your full attention, you need to rectify the situation. Subliminal subs. With something made to order. Subliminal subs. From the fresh food specialists at the home of the grilled sub. Subliminal subs. Subliminal subs. I just said that subliminally. Said what? Subliminal subs. That was you? 
I thought it was my stomach talking. This is your stomach talking. Subliminal subs, grilled subs, and more. You know you want one. Subliminal subs are made to order by fresh food specialists. With grilled and specialty subs, fresh salads, soups, and drinks. Subliminal subs. Has locations on both sides of the river. In Illinois, you'll find subliminal subs in O'Fallon on Highway 50, on South Main and Waterloo, and in the Edwardsville Troy area on Edwardsville Road off I-55 exit 18. And in Missouri, there's the newest location in the Westport Plaza, coming soon to Millstadt in the Central West End. Go to subliminalsubs.com for the full menu, locations, and phone numbers. Subliminal Subs. You know you want one. Hello, St. Louis. This is John Londoff Jr. Purchasing a vehicle should be more than a price tag. At Johnny Londoff Chevrolet, we not only have great prices, but we also have the best customer service in town. From the moment you walk into our showroom floor till you drive off the lot in your new or pre-owned vehicle, we'll treat you like family. And with over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles in stock, Johnny Londoff Chevrolet stands above the rest. Malibu's only 17.9. Impala's just 18.9. And Johnny Londoff Chevrolet is St. Louis Cruise and Silverado headquarters with over 500 in stock. Price to sell. Chevy Cruise only 13.9. Silverado's as low as 15.9. Pre-owned certified rates 1.9%. Are you kidding me? Plus, I'll guarantee top dollar for your trade. Visit us at I-270 at the Washington Elizabeth exit. Shop online 24-7 at Londoff.com or call 314-837-1800. Come experience the Londoff difference. Chevy, find new roads. Johnny Landoff, Chevrolet. I need a data backup solution for my business to replace my current tape backup device. Do you want to spend a lot of money? No. Do you want to store and pay for replicated data? No. How about a solution that's difficult to install and use? No. Offshore automated phone tree support okay? No. Then yes, we can help. Barracuda Backup. End-to-end -end protection for physical and virtual servers, including data deduplication, to significantly reduce storage requirements, and replicated cloud storage for assured recovery, and live humans to answer your calls. Try Barracuda Backup free. Go to barracuda.com slash yes. Get your questions answered about your home maintenance and repairs by me, Crystal Anderson, on the new program, House Talk. Tune in to House Talk Saturdays at 2 p.m. on the big 550 KTRS. Now, live from Studio 550, this is the McGraw Show on KTRS. Scott Sherman hangs out with us on uh, Thursdays. He's our legal beagle, and uh, we're talking uh, Larry Connors, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I had a little bit of a rant because um, their KMOV's uh, comment about his, their their journalistic integrity is somewhat hampered by keeping Larry Connors behind the desk is laughable. I mean, it is it is it is fall off the chair laughable. To, to insinuate that somehow their journalistic integrity is questioned because Larry Connors would keep his job after questioning the IRS after an interview with President Obama. Now, what was the interview, Scott Crothers, that started this off? I'll, I'll answer to anything. Or, or Scott It's Crothers. better than what he calls me off. <laughs> That's a good I point. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, so what was the interview that started this off? Larry Connors flew to Washington, D.C. Yeah, right. He's good enough to go interview the president. Yes. And he's always been good enough to be there for almost 40 years. Right, or, right, right. Yeah. You know, the lead of their, the head, the face of their station. He's, he's good enough to be tased, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Right? <laughs> so, without further ado, here is the interview in which uh, Larry Connors conducted uh, with President Obama that he says... And asking the question after this interview, the payment plan for his IRS deal changed. And Larry Connors, he didn't say he didn't say the IRS ganged up on him. All he said was, "Hey, I wonder if." He was asking a question. And and, and after the current IRS scandal, why wouldn't you ask a question like that? That's what journalists do. That's their job. That's their do. They ask questions, and where the questions lead, that's not my fault. That's just a question I have. So, without further ado, here's the interview that uh, Larry Connors prefaced in that Facebook posting with uh, President uh, Obama in this uh, latest re-election campaign. The economy is a big issue and concern for folks. I mean, the unemployment, trying to make ends meet, gas prices, food prices going up. Some of our viewers are complaining. They, they just don't, you know, they get frustrated, even angered, when they see the first family jetting around, different vacations and so forth. Sometimes maybe they think under color of state 
business and that you're out of touch, that you don't really know what they're experiencing right well, now. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know uh, uh, how many viewers you're, you're talking about that say that. We but, do hear from some. Well, I, I, yeah, I, well, I, I hear from all I'm kinds sure you of do. viewers about, uh, <laughs> about everything. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is I think if you look at my track record, uh, I'm raising a family here. Uh, when we travel, we've got to travel through Secret Service and Air Force One. That's not, uh, that's not my choice. Uh, I think most folks understand uh, how hard I work and, and how hard this administration is working on behalf of the American people. That's it. Do we, have the, was, do we have the Larry Connors then comes back afterwards? Yeah. So afterwards, Larry Connors comes back uh, after that little blip and then uh, says this. Are we ready to go? Hold on a second here. Um, so he, they, 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 Larry then goes, they then go to Larry. Um, and, and I don't think that anything in that first exchange is, is out of bounds. And well, I mean, I've right, heard so, that a thousand times. So, so here's now, they then cut to Larry after that, that clip. Here's what Larry Connor says. The president dodged the question, and there was not a lot of time in this format to ask a lot of follow-up questions. Critics are not concerned about his need for Secret Service or Air Force One. They're questioning all the family vacations, where, when, how often, all at taxpayer expense, especially in light of this economy. From the White House, Washington, D.C., I'm Larry Connors. I, I, you know, I, I would actually... <laughs> You have one question to ask Obama. I'm not sure I'd ask him about, hey, you take a lot of vacation, considering the last guy took the whole month of oct- <laughs> right. October or I was like, August who is, off. Who's, who's a- he interviewing? <laughs> he was saving these. These were follow-ups from I'm President sorry, Bush. I'm sorry. I thought you were President Bush. I'm confused. Vacation. Um, but, but with that being said, that that's the that's what Larry Connors, that was the interview he did. Um, you know, it seems to me like it's a whole lot of nothing. It's just yeah. nothing. That's nothing. It's not what well, no, this whole thing is oh. nothing. The the Facebook posting yeah. is not, it wasn't like Larry Connors posted pictures of him doing drugs or I mean he asked a question on Facebook. Hey, I interviewed the president and they and uh my IRS troubles got worse. Hmm. I wonder what's going on. I uh, he's and he even says I don't believe in conspiracy theorists. I'm not, you know, but I did this, and this happened. Hmm. It makes one think. Especially when it come to light that it looks like at least some local IRS offices were actively engaged in sort of a political witch hunt. Exactly. We didn't know that that was going on. In fact, not only do we not know it was going on, the woman that took the Fifth Amendment yesterday, right. we had to find out from her bragging about it at a... At a uh, and she, ABA convention, right. and then somebody else had either lied or not told the complete truth at another congressional hearing. So this is coming to light now. So it makes you wonder if they're capable of targeting people based on their sort of political bent, if they're capable of doing that, and they have a history of of sort of doing nasty things to people that are the, right. the president's opponents. What about this? This doesn't just go back to the Obama administration. This is Nixon stuff from the from the. I the, agree. So what is <clears throat> the problem with a guy on his Facebook page bringing something up that could be embarrassing to him personally? I didn't know anything about his tax problems. Right. He's the one that brought it up. Okay. So what? So you can't have a news anchor that has a tax lien. Right. I mean, if that's the case, if you can't have somebody in the broadcasting business that has an issue with something nobody would be on the air right right and second of all that's not the reason they said they were getting rid of him right they didn't say he's irresponsible and we have people that he that trust him Mm -hmm. and because he's irresponsible with his way he does his taxes but he's not going to prison for anything like this right this isn't criminal right they're not saying he doesn't pay his taxes, or or he has a tax problem. We can't trust him. Or, They're saying he crossed the journalistic line. What right. the guy asked a question? That's he did his job. Then he commented on his job. Now, who really thinks that Larry Connors, who's been doing this for forty years, can't be fair if he's been fair the entire time? Right. Either he hasn't been fair and he's been tricking everybody. Not to mention, or he went nuts. Not to mention the the guy who's now is going to replace him is. Paid for by the St. Louis Rams. Yeah. 
Right. He's 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 an all he, he's an employee of the St. Louis Rams. He's the play-by-play man for the St. Louis Rams. The St. Louis Rams want to build a new stadium. The St. Louis Rams might want to leverage something to move out of town. To they might want public funds to build a new stadium. You're going to have an anchor on on Channel Four who is paid for by the Rams. Then what? Read a story and investigate. Do you think Steve Savard can actually interview Stan Kroenke? I think that he definitely could, but it would be an apparent conflict of interest. Steve I agree. Savard, I agree. It's personal integrity. Nobody questions it. I don't but question it. It looks at all. bad. I don't question it at all. It looks terrible. But if you're going to say Larry Connors crossed the jur- right. the journalistic Rubicon by asking a question, right? How? Why is it okay Savard can do what he's going to do, but Larry Connors? is uh, persona non grata. Now, they do one thing. Let's not kill them. Channel 4 does one thing perfect. What's that? Claire Kellett. All right, ladies and gentlemen. There's <laughs> well, All right. I, first time in my 18 years of broadcasting career that I'm You're actually speechless. speechless. Uh, Scott Sherman, who's your sponsor? St. Louis Home Retention Group. Now, there's been a lot of talk about a lot of scandals, and the real scandal has been the home mortgage crisis. There was just a documentary I saw the other day about the Justice Department, the Obama Justice Department, not having criminal investigations of the way in which the whole housing bubble collapsed. But what they will do is go after some people that are fraudsters. One of the people they went after is this group in Florida that was scamming people into believing that they could refinance their mortgages under these federal programs. And it not only wasn't true, but thousands of people not only lost their homes, lost money because of these fraudsters. That's why it's really important that you go to the right person when your house is at stake and the right people that you can trust with a 95% plus success rate is St. Louis Home Retention Group. They are local. They're not out of town. They know all of the federal programs. They know if you're qualified and they can get you qualified they do it right the first time. You don't have to worry. 636-527-5121, 636-527-5121, or stlouishomeretentiongroup.com. 936 here at the Big 550 KTRS as we get a check of traffic with Ed Smarin at the Golden Oak Lending Traffic Center. Ed? Roads look pretty good overall. We still have some slow traffic on eastbound 64 from Timberlake Manor to Mason Road. 70 westbound before 79 and O'Fallon. The right lane closed through the end of next month for construction. And then westbound 70 again at Madison Street. We have the right lane closed for road work there until 3 this afternoon. Traffic brought to you by Applebee's. Your stomach doesn't care what time it is. After 8 p.m., Applebee's becomes the bees with half-price appetizers and drink specials. It's late night done. Right. See you tomorrow from the Golden Oak Lending Traffic Center. I'm Ed Smarin. I'm the Big 550 KTRS. Quiet weather around today. There's another weak cool front moving through with a few clouds this morning. A little more sunshine this afternoon. Today's high 72. Tonight we clear out 50 for the low. Tomorrow looks pretty good. Sunshine in 71 for the high. Saturday partly cloudy in 74. Sunday we're warming up with highs near 80. Sunday and Monday there could be a couple of isolated afternoon storms both days. I'm Fox 2 meteorologist Glenn Zimmerman for the Big 550 KTRS. Hi, I'm Joe Williams, the film critic of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I've been a Cardinal fan since I was about seven years old following the uh, 67 and 68 Cardinals. Last year was probably the greatest year I've ever had as a Cardinal fan. And if you don't think Game 6 was the greatest game ever played in the history of sports, then you don't understand storytelling. You know, in my job, I really have to think a lot about uh, story arcs, about drama, about happy endings. Well, last year exceeded everything that a Hollywood screenwriter could ever come up with. It was the ultimate experience for a baseball fan, and even for somebody who just likes happy endings. The idea that a hometown kid in the bottom of the 13th inning with one strike left could win the uh, the sixth game of the World Series is just uh, something that you know people say oh a screenwriter couldn't write something like that well actually screenwriters write things like that all the time uh, you can read my reviews every week in the st. Louis Post-Dispatch or online at stltoday.com read it every day in the Post-Dispatch or online at stltoday.com
Hi, George Weber. To honor our veterans, Weber Chevrolet is closed for Memorial Day on Monday, but we're still having a Memorial Day sale. That's right. This Saturday and Tuesday, Weber Chevrolet is offering the lowest prices of the year on all our vehicles. For example, 2013 base Chevy Cruze is just $14,900, 2013 LS Malibu just $17,900, and 2013 Equinox just $21,900. All prices exclude taxes and include all factory rebates and dealer discounts. If you qualify for any special rebate, you pay even less. As always, there are no gimmicks or restrictions, and everyone qualifies. Plus, we have huge discounts on all Silverados. Please check out WeberChevrolet.com for all pricing details. Payment buyer? Our low-mileage leases can really save you money and require no money down with approved credit. Cruise just $189 per month, Malibu $239, or Equinox just $269 a month. Again, all with no money down. That's the Memorial Day sale, Saturday and Tuesday, where you can get the lowest prices of the year. It's only at Weber Chevrolet, Granite City, Columbia, Illinois, and Creve Corps, or online at WeberChevrolet.com. Hey, boys and girls, join us for the Blackfin Bullpen Show each and every Tuesday night. Hadley and Hewer live on the Big 550 KTRs, live at the Blackfin at the Galleria. Great game day, food and drink specials, happy hour starting at 4. If you reserve your happy hour or game watching party for 10 or more, you grab a complimentary appetizer platter. You heard me? A complimentary appetizer platter. The Blackfin is the place to be at the Galleria. Watch your game at the game watching headquarters known as the Blackfin. Performance Bicycle, the nation's largest online cycling retailer, has created the largest sales event in their 31-year history. Now through Memorial Day, everything's on sale at performancebike.com. Over 10,000 items, all on sale with savings up to 70% off. Save on every bike we sell and all the gear you need for every style of riding. Every helmet, jersey, short, shoe, part, accessory, everything is on sale. The Everything's on Sale event at performancebike.com runs through Memorial Day. Don't miss it. Larry Connors gets uh, fired for having the audacity to uh, ask a question on Facebook. Scott Sherman, we can get to that legal stuff in a second. But I want to go to another lawyer. Please. Let's go to Bill Haas, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Bill Haas on the Big 550 KJS Harvard educated Bill Haas. Bill, good morning this morning. I just love when when I when I um when you take my call, even the, even when I'm mad at you. Um, so here. It, By the way, we not, should. I don't want to. I don't want to worry you, Bill Haas, but you're on uh, KTRS as well as STLtoday.com. I think it's wonderful, and I don't think you promote that arrangement enough, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, you're so all wet on this subject, and Scott Sherman's been all wet ever since he was baptized, <laughs> or, or, the, or the bris, which, if you prefer. Um, and you've never been more wrong, and you're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. Lay it on me. The facts are that he went on Facebook and spun a national story because he had a dog in that fight and an agenda that he didn't like that they were persecuting him. And now he wants to explain what he meant. Well, once your butt's caught in the ringer, it's a little late to explain what you meant. The time to say he didn't disclose that they'd been after him for years. And if he wants to say that they tried to change that's his not, thing that's not, that's not That's not correct. According to Joe Holloman of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, he told Joe Holloman that he had a payment plan and he was paying it back. After the interview with President Obama, the payment plan was changed or revoked or something. And he yes, asked, a, hold on a second. He asked, a, this is according to Larry Connors. He asked right. a question saying, hey, after my interview with President Obama, my tax problems. Now, he said they came after me. He, he, and then he said I should have explained that I, I've exactly. been having these problems for, exactly. for, for years. But after the interview, after his interview, the terms of his IRS plea deal changed. So he asked a question and said, hmm, after, he didn't ask it before the IRS ever got into trouble. After the IRS got into trouble and, and they, were, they were exposed for targeting people, did he say, hey, I interviewed President Obama and my tax thing changes with, with the IRS? That's interesting. That's not what he said. He said they came after me after the interview. He didn't disclose that he had they had been after him for years. If he had said they had been after me for years and now my tax repayment plan changed, fine, full disclosure. He didn't disclose that they had been after him for years. Once he was able to once he was able to tell the larger story 
right? It's a Facebook page. You can tell whatever story you want. He didn't. He spun it for his own agenda, and he and you're out when you do that. This is not even a close call. He spun a national story without for his own agenda without telling the facts. You're out. You understand that he was set. Now he maybe he look. I I, I guess I'm exactly. defending. Exactly. Thank you for agreeing with me. I guess I'm defending Larry Connors. But once I the full so. story comes out, you know those you know those media types. They only tell half the story, right? Even on themselves. Once the full story comes out, um, his point is, hey, I had the plan. It's now changed after the interview. I wonder now that I know the IRS is targeting people. I asked him a tough question. Maybe they came after me. Who knows? Well, his Facebook post would have been the place to disclose his history with it. And now he says, well, now let me explain. You not, had plenty of chance to not explain, if, and you didn't. You're not out. if the company forced him to read a statement that he couldn't change and he was not allowed to comment on. It's too late. Now if they could just get rid of that weather fool, I could start <laughs> watching Channel 4 again. Which, which, which leather, weather fool are you talking about? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Which weather fool were you talking about? The young one who replaced the old one who was so wonderful. And the women weather people are all wonderful, too. Hey, uh, you can... He's a very nice guy, and and I'm just a petty, bitter old man, but that doesn't change my point. You can count on Kent, you know. (laughs) Kent is wonderful. Kent Earhart's the goods. Well, they forced him out, didn't they? Well, he's still in there doing, doing something. He was the lead one. Yeah, he was the chief the meteorologist, and then they, I think it cost more to have a chief in front of your name. So they went with the younger demographic, and I and speaking for the older generation, I'm against that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Thanks Haas, the, the Big Five Fifty KTR. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, what What are the laws? What, to, to, Shockingly, and maybe to those people that have had this experience, there's very little protection for free speech in the workplace. There's some, but it's very narrow. And for Larry Connors, who was expressing his First Amendment right to speak on a topic of, of national and, and, and social importance, whether the IRS is targeting him or anyone else for their political or social po- points of view, there's very little that can be done to protect your job. But, uh, but hold on a second here. Yeah. He didn't state an opinion. He asked a question. He commented on something controversial. No, he didn't comment on it. He asked a question. It's a rhetorical question. But he asked it. Okay, I'm on your side and Larry Connor's side right. on the sense that he should be able to say whatever he wants and not lose his job. Is Larry Connor's allowed to ask any question he wants? Of course he is. Well, then why is he fired? Because they can fire him if they decide they're going to fire him. <laughs> because that's the way we work in this country and in this state in particular where you have at-will employment. Now, he, unlike 95% of other people, has a contract, a written employment contract. And let me tell you something. Channel 4 is going to be paying him whether he's on the air or not. And from an investment point of view, this isn't real smart. Well, wait a minute. Can't they say that he broke some type of moral code or something? Depends on what's in that contract. And a lot of those morals clauses, right. they're not they're not upheld because they're not... They're, they're, that's true because Carney would never get paid. That's true. <laughs> he would never have a contract. But... In the sense of what's in his contract, we can all look at tea leaves and think and maybe and whatever. But the fact is that he did not, to my view, do anything that would be a fireable offense at all. They just decided that they were going to fire him and they came up with some kind of excuse. Now, there are people that get fired all the time for liking Facebook or saying something on Facebook. And it doesn't really come out because their employer has the right, unless there's some it's some kind of union activity right. or they have a union or they're trying to start a union. There's almost no federal or state protection for that, at least in this state. Now there is a case that's being argued this morning in Virginia in the fourth circuit federal court of appeals about a very similar kind of set of circumstances. There was a sheriff's deputy and a bunch of other sheriff's deputies working in Hampton roads, which is near Virginia beach. And they were liking the Facebook page of the guy running against their boss, the sheriff. So the sheriff gets wind of this after the election. The sheriff won, and he said, everybody who liked my opponent is fired. And those people filed a grievance with the Labor Relations Board, and it went to court, and the case was kicked out because that judge said, liking Facebook 
is not speech. So this, this morning, there's an argument as to whether or not these government employees, and there's a difference between government and private, and Channel right. 4 is private, whether liking something on Facebook or saying something on Facebook is at least speech that could be protected in your employment situation. Well, let's put it this way. Let's end it this, this way. Yes. Larry Connors asked a question. Was it a good question? Maybe not. Was it a poorly worded question? Maybe. Was it a dumb question? Who knows? The point is, the man is an anchor, and he asked a question that was uh, um, prompted by a national story. That's all he did, and he happened to be involved in the question he was asking. And that's why the man was fired? Ridiculous. And I will stand with my journalistic brethren to defend Larry Connor's right to have the audacity to ask a question. When, and shame on Channel 4. When journalists are no longer allowed to have opinions, when, when, we're in trouble. And let's put it this way. Especially this wasn't the first bad question asked by a Channel 4 employer. And how much e- employee? And how much money did they make over the decades with Larry Connors at the news anchor desk? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, John Beale Roofing has a contest. What, 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 I want to know, journalistic integrity, what was the TV station that gave away a purse? There was a news, there was a news organization that was giving away a purse. Was it Channel 4 or was it Channel 5? I don't remember. It was like last week. They give iPods away on the and two some, Fox. Somebody, was, was it a 5? I, I can't remember. It was a 4 or 5, but I mean, you know, journalistic integrity. I, it, was, it was a news person who was like, hey, we're giving away a purse, and this purse is great. Check out this purse. So it must have been, was it Channel 5 or Channel One of them. But I mean, give me a break, <laughs> journalistic integrity. Local news, journalistic integrity. <laughs>